heading into 2017, the metagame was rife with speedy item decks and plenty of mega Pokémon. However, the next set, Guardians Rising, would completely throw up the metagame. Today we're going to be going through some of the many impactful cards from Guardians Rising, and I'll, maybe I'll prove to you why it is one of the best Pokémon TCG expansions ever released. Undoubtedly, the most impactful card from the Guardians Rising set on its release was Garboder. There was nothing that could escape its brutal trash Lanch attack, which did 20 times the amount of item cards in your opponent's discard pile. Going into the set, items were everywhere. Every deck was abusing cards like Trainer's Mail, Max Elixir, Acrobike, and all sorts of cards that allowed you to get through your deck on the very first turn of the game, getting you a very strong setup. Garboder, however, put an end to that, as Garboder's trash Lanch would punish those decks by quickly eliminating them with powerful trash Lanch attacks that could be boosted by cards like Field Blower to remove your opponent's tools. This attack was really good, winning both the 2018 World Championships and taking second place in the 2017 World Championships the year it released. It's also got the Acid Spray attack, which seems bad, but for 3 energy to 70 and flip a coin if heads discard energy from the opponent's active Pokémon. This is actually a great attack because with a Choice Band boosting the damage, which we'll talk about later, you could hit for 100, which would hit 200 with weakness, which hit the very popular Espeon GX, which was coincidentally one of the best Garboder partners. From Espeon Garboder, to Drampa Garboder, to Galisapod Garboder, to Zoroark Garboder, to Buzzwool Garboder, Garboder was an essential piece of the formats from 2017 to 2018, all until the rotation of Breakpoint Garbodor. Garboder was everywhere and everything. It is one of the best cards of all time, and what part of what makes Guardians Rising one of the best sets of all time. The second most impactful card from the set was undoubtedly Tapu Lele GX with its Wonder Tag ability, which when you put it from your hand onto your bench allowed you to search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. This is the same ability as the modern Luminion V, the old Jirachi EX, and the old Lapras from Legend Maker. All of these cards have seen play, but none of them quite as much as Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele, to understand, has 170 HP. At this time, many of the best attackers would have 180 to 220 HP, so having 170 HP was barely even a downside of having a liability Pokemon. It also came strapped with usable attacks with its energy drive attack, which is 20 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon, not affected by weakness or resistance, which is just really solid for putting on pressure early on. You can donk evolving Pokemon, and you can allow decks that usually have a smaller damage cap like Decidueye to hit bigger with energy drive than they could with their own attack. It's also got the somewhat useful Tapu Kier GX, which heals all damage from two of your benched Pokémon. Occasionally, if you play Psychic Energy, like the Metagross GX deck at the time did, you could take advantage of this to heal uh, in a pinch, which is very good if you did not have another GX attack to use. This card really defined the entire time it was around, all the way up until around when Dedenne GX released, which is just kind of uh, a little unfortunate. But Tapu Lele was an S-tier card from the time it released, to almost two years later, you really can't discount it at all. It is one of the best Pokemon cards of all time. This is a reminder to please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, so I can keep on making these videos. At 1,000 subscribers, I start to be able to monetize these videos, which should help me put that money back into the channel for more videos. Thank you. One of the hyped up cards going into the set was Trevenant. Trevenant has a neat poltergeist attack that is 30 times the amount of trainer cards in your opponent's hand. This attack, while it seems very unreliable and weak at first, could be paired with the item locking vile plume that had come out a couple years prior that was still legal in this format. Everything seemed to be going well for it, but this deck really didn't take off. We instead saw a Garbodor Trevenant deck take top 32 at a regional thanks to Caleb Gedimer. This deck is very cool as it combines the Poltergeist attack, threatening your opponent's hand of trainer cards, with the Garbodor that threatens to punish your opponent if they play their hand down to low sizes by hitting with trash -a -lanch. It's a neat deck, and I feel like Trevenant is worth mentioning even just for this little hype it had. 
Turtonator GX was an immediately impactful card right upon release as it slotted into the already existing Volcanion EX deck. It also fit perfectly with what the deck needed to do in the new set. See, with Garbodor around, the deck could not afford to play as many item cards to get as fast as a setup as it would prior. So Turtonator GX fit in with its Nitro Tank GX, which allowed you to attach five energy cards from the discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. And this fit in to allow the Volcanion deck to rely less on the item cards like Max Elixir that it previously had. It also has some very good attacks that can be abused by the Volcanion deck, such as the Bright Flame attack, which did just a very high 160 damage, which could be boosted further by Volcanion, allowing it to hit even higher highs, and the Shell Trap attack, which allowed Volcanion to go on the defensive while it's set up by hitting 420, and if the opponent attacked back into Turtonator, they would take 80. Well, this seems like it would not stick in a format with Versus Seeker and Lysander, a boss's orders effect card. It actually is more reliable than you may think at swinging some matchups. While not immediately apparent for its own utility, the Alolan Bullpix with the Free Beacon Attack is one of the best cards from the set later on. The Free Beacon Attack allows you to search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. This is great on your first turn if you're going second, as you can attack and get a little bit of advantage that you wouldn't have going first, since you can attach, retreat, and then use the Free Attack if your Pokemon has one retreat cost. This card would become very good later on once we saw the Lost Thunder Ninetales, Fairy Ninetales GX release to pair with it. Where Vulpix did fit right into immediately though was the Alolan Ninetales GX deck with the Water Alolan Ninetales. This card is an all-in-all -all great support attacker and a great attacker in its own right. It has the Ice Blade attack which for a double close energy allows it to be splashed into a ton of decks and it does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. We saw this both used in its own deck and in Decidueye decks at the time which could use Ice Blade and pile it on with Decidueye's ability Feather Arrow to do even more damage. It also has the Blizzard Ed attack, which does 160 damage and discards 2 energy from the Pokemon. Because you can discard 2 energy, you can also discard double colorless energy to pay for this. This also was great with the new Aqua Patch card from this set, which could allow you to re-accelerate discarded water energy back into play. Maybe the scariest part of Alola Ninetales is its Ice Path GX. I would know, I lost a pre-release to it. Move all damage counters from this Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if your opponent does not one-hit KO Ninetales, Ninetales is going to fully heal itself while putting that damage on the opponent, allowing for defensive and offensive pressure in just two energies on a GX attack. This card really had it all and was great right into the meta when it released. While this card was very hyped up when it initially released, this card only saw some play in some Vickavolt decks for quite a long time. This was, of course, until the release of Pikachu and Zekrom GX and all the lightning support that came later, which turned this card into an all-star piece in that deck, since its arrow trail could move lightning energy from your other Pokemon to Tapu Koko, allowing it to come in at any point and use its very powerful Tapu Thunder GX, which did 50 times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Great for countering decks that attached energy with Welder or Pikachu and Zekrom that you are facing against. This card saw a lot of play in the later part of its lifespan and is definitely worth a mention. While it may seem Monday now, the release of Oracorio from Guardians Rising with the Ghost Oracorio is one of the most impactful cards from the set at the time. Its supernatural dance attack for one energy puts a damage counter on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like for each Pokemon in their discard pile. This is a great attack that countered the very popular Vespaquen deck in Standard at the time and was used to great effect in many decks at the North American International Championship, but was even more important in the expanded form Format, where Vespaquen, Flareon, and Night March all ravaged the formats with single prizers that put a ton of Pokemon in the discard pile. Supernatural Dance allowed a finally decent check to come out to put those decks on thin ice. Even though this was a very specific counter, it also has general utility. You won't hate putting this card in your deck as you will find occasional situations in which Supernatural Dance will provide a ton of value by allowing you to take a knockout you may have otherwise not had.
while not being immediately the top of the meta, this Mimikyu card would catch on in some decks over its lifespan, especially the Malamar archetype, which could accelerate psychic energy from the discard pile to their benched Pokemon. Perfect for a psychic attacker like Mimikyu, which used its copycat attack to great effect to copy one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks that was used last turn. This could allow you to turn the tables on your opponent that had unleashed a powerful non-GX attack on your Pokemon with a single prize attacker like Mimikyu. Its Filch attack, which drew two cards, was also not bad if you happened to start it. This card really did a lot when you could use it well. Maybe one of the most hated cards of the set was Roadblock Sudowoodo. Roadblock Sudowoodo was a check to decks that needed large benches by forcing your opponent to have down to four benched Pokemon. Well, this seems very fair, um, but since you would also have four benched Pokemon after playing Pseudo Wudo, the decks that often abused Pseudo Wudo were decks that used the Skyfield Stadium to increase their bench size to eight, so they would essentially be playing with a bench of seven while you would have to play with four. This could be really obnoxious to deal with, and it was also a good counter to those decks using Skyfield to increase their bench size, so it really depended on which side of the Pseudo Wudo you were on, but you never wanted to see your opponent put one down either way. Lycanroc GX is one of the most powerful attackers of the Sun and Moon era, mainly for its fighting, weakness hitting, and its amazing Bloodthirsty Eyes ability, which when you play it from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, switch one of your opponents benched with their active. This is a boss's orders Lysander effect that allows you to constantly target down your opponent's Pokemon, and it's great because its Claw Slash attack hits 110 damage, which would later become relevant for hitting weakness and doing almost exact math on the very infamous Zoroark GX which would be knocked out by Claw Slash. It also had a more affordable, dangerous Rogue GX that did 50 for each of your opponent's benched Pokémon, which is just a very strong attack to threaten a lot of damage at once. This card really may never kept your opponent's bench safe. With either Gust or Dangerous Rogue GX, your opponent would never feel safe from this thing's powerful fighting attacks, and while it did take some time to really see some play until Buzzwool GX came out to pair with it, this card was always good when it was around. One of my favorite cards from the Guardians Rising set is the Haunch Crow. This sees play in one of my favorite Sun and Moon to Lost Thunder decks, in which you use its Raven's Claw attack to do 10 plus 10 damage for each damage hunter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. The goal of the deck is to use the opening turns, setting up damage on your opponent's Pokemon with this set's Weavile and the Tapu Koko promo, which would put a bunch of damage on your opponent's Pokemon for Haunch Crow to come and clean up in the late game by sweeping with its 1 KO potential with Raven's Claw. It is certainly a very unique and fun card that I love quite a lot. Metagross GX was out of the gate one of the powerhouse cards of the set. Its massive 250 HP allowed it to tank hits like nothing else and then heal them off with max potions. Its Geotech system allowed you to accelerate a psychic or metal energy from your discard pile to your active Pokemon, allowing you to continually stream its attacks. Why would you need to extreme his attacks? Because it's Giga Hammer, does 150, and you can't use Giga Hammer during your next turn. This unfortunate downside was offset by Geotech System, as you could retreat your Metagross into another Metagross and use Geotech System to power up your next attack. Its Algorithm GX, well, very unreliable, allowed you to search for five cards and put them into your hand. This nearly forced your opponent to play a card like N to disrupt your hand, which they almost always did, but if they didn't, getting five of any card is really, really good. This card immediately saw play, doing very well at regionals, but it kind of fell off after some time, especially going into the world format, it was not seen nearly as much. So while it only succeeded at the very earliest part of its lifespan, it was a very cool card that I loved playing. One of the most popular cards from the set is undoubtedly Sylveon GX, with its magical ribbon that allows you to search the deck for three cards and put them into your hand. To understand why this is good, you must understand that the Eevee from Sun and Moon base set was able to evolve if you attached a fairy energy to it on the first turn of the game, meaning you could start using Magical Ribbon immediately. While those cards should, could be disrupted by the opponent with a card like N, you would allow you to slowly build up a hand and then eventually start disrupting your opponent with cards like Energy Disruption, Crushing Hammer, and Enhanced Hammer, which were very popular at the time. Sylveon was all about that control game, but it still got some attacks to back it up, like its 110 damage Fairy Wind and the annoying Plea GX, which put two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their opponent's hand. Sylveon GX paired with both Gardevoir and as it long inside itself as a great control deck, with just a ton of Sylveon and a ton of disruption. It's a really fun deck to play, but maybe not to play against. Drampa came out of the gate swinging with its Berserk attack to establish itself as one of the single best cards in the set. 
Its Berserk Attack, which is its main bread and butter, did 80 damage, but 70 more if your quenched Pokemon have any damage counters on them. This very easy to fill effect on the attack allowed Berserk to swing for a ton of damage starting on turn 2. You'd also use attacks like its Righteous Edge to do 20 damage and discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. With double colorless energy and rainbow energy all over the place, Righteous Edge was great for slowing your opponent down while you got your Berserk Attack ready to go. It also had the Big Wheel GX. Just in case your hand was dead, you could shuffle your hand into your deck and draw 10 cards. While your opponent might disrupt you, they would have to use a disruption card, which meant you'd still have at least a decent hand afterwards anyways. Dramba GX was immediately playable, seeing play with both Zoroark from Breakthrough and Garboder from Guardians Rising, with a Garboder Drampa deck winning the North America International Championships and being lauded as one of the best decks, if not the best deck, of the format it came out in. While Drampa's popularity weaned a little bit as Power Creep kept up to it, it stayed around even for the 2018 World Championships when it was played even still as one of the best big swinger colorless guys around. If you needed colorless and you needed damage, Drampa could do that better than basically anyone else. Part of why Guardians Rising Reigns is one of the best sets is not only just because of its Pokemon, but because of its trainer cards. Like the Brooklet Hill Stadium, which searched the deck for a basic water or basic fighting Pokemon and put it onto a player's bench once during their turn. This is an incredible stadium since there's many fighting and water Pokemon playable throughout the time Brooklet Hill was legal, like the aforementioned Alola Ninetales line and the Lycanroc line, and things like Buzzwool GX that would come out later. Brooklet Hill was so good for so long, allowing so many water and fighting Pokemon to hit the field. Arguably the best trainer card from the set was Choice Band, which made the attacks of the Pokemon it was attached to do 30 more to active Pokemon GX or EX on your opponent's side. This was an incredible damage buff that immediately put itself in every deck with multiple copies when it came out. Almost every deck had to take advantage of Choice Band because the damage on it was so, so powerful, and it made attacks like Berserk's Drampa in particular hit particularly hard, going from a two-shot to a one-shot. Other decks did not slow down though, every deck was using Choice Band because Choice Band is broken. From the time it released till about the time it rotated, this card was around everywhere, and for good reason, there was no better tool in the Sun and Moon era, possibly, than Choice Band. Up there with Choice Band as one of the most powerful items of the Sun and Moon era is Field Blower, which allowed you to choose two in any combination of tool and stadium cards and play both yours and your opponents and discard them. To understand why this card is so good, you have to understand Garboder, with its other favorite partner, Garboder from Breakpoint, which would lock the abilities of Pokemon in play if it had a tool card attached. The only way to remove tool cards that wasn't using weird attacks or abilities was to use Field Blower, which was immediately put into so many decks because of its ability to swing Garboder's ability lock off and get the game back. Every deck, therefore, had to take advantage of Field Blower if they wanted to use their abilities. It also acted as a stadium bump, better than cards like Tool Scrapper before it that also removed tools. So maybe if your opponent had an annoying stadium, you could get rid of it. This card saw play as long as Garboder saw play, which was pretty much until 2018 rotation. This card was incredible in so many decks and cannot be understated how good it was, even for just a leaf blower. Mallow is a reprint of the classic Oracle Supporter, which saw a ton of play, which allows you to search your deck for two cards and put them on top of your deck. Would Mallow continue to see play though, like Oracle did? Well, of course, it would take a bit for Mallow to catch on, but upon the release of Zoroark GX, Mallow became a great card. Since Zoroark GX allowed you to discard a card from your hand and draw the top two cards, Mallow worked perfectly, allowing you to set any two cards at the top, meaning you could get any two cards with Zoroark's trait. Mallow was a decent card in Zoroark decks due to its ability for Zoroark to grab any card, even ones it could not search. Lastly, let's talk about maybe the other most impactful item. I know there's been quite a few from Guardians Rising, Rescue Stretcher, an item so good it has not even been redone to this day. You choose one effect, put a Pokemon from your disc pile into your hand, or shuffle three Pokemon from your disc pile into your deck. This card immediately saw play in nearly every single deck, as recovering Pokemon was good, and the only decks that had anything not to do with Rescue Stretcher is because they had type-specific options with the Grass Revitalizer card that worked like a better Rescue Stretcher. But for every deck that wasn't Grass, you were playing Rescue Stretcher. From the time it came out to the time it rotated, it was one of the single best item cards ever printed. 
I hope this look at the Guardians Rising set allowed you to realize how many incredible cards come from this one set. This set was immediately meta-defining with so many of its GX and single prize Pokemon seeing play immediately, and others like Alolan Vulpix and the Tapu Koko GX seeing play later in their lifespan that they didn't at the beginning of their lifespan. There is so many, so many good cards from this set, and it cannot be understated that it is one of the best sets of all time. Thanks for watching this video. Please do tune in next time to when I do another of these best sets of all time videos. We'll be checking out other sets like Phantom Forces, maybe sets like Neo Genesis in the near future, so stay tuned and thank you. Subscribe, please. Please subscribe.